Uh, you are with breakfast. We are turning now to the contentious and uncertain subject of vaccine certificates and the idea that if you don't have one, you can't go somewhere. Melissa and Pini Henare, just talking about Tematitini, for example. The example being cited is music festivals take rhythm and vines, in which thousands of young people hang in gloriously close proximity in the Gisborne sunshine for three days. No vaccine, no entry. Now, that's relatively straightforward, but where we work is less so. Can your employer insist you are vaccinated? Do you have the right to not work beside someone who isn't vaccinated? Do your clients or customers or whoever you deal with have the right to know that if they're dealing with you or your employer, they're dealing with a vaccinated workforce? The answer is, um, so we're really delighted to welcome to breakfast an employment law specialist, Ashley Jane A.J. Lodge, is a partner at Anderson Lloyd and Christchurch, who alongside John Farrow leads their national employment team, and she's with us from Ototahi now. AJ, Ashley, Jane, we are so grateful for you being up and in at work early to be with us. Thank you for your time and good morning. Morena. Uh, Morena, John. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Are you already giving advice to people on, on, on what they can do and what they can't do? Yes, we are. Um, we've already had a number of inquiries recently from employers across a range of industries, uh, all wanting to know whether they can require their staff to be vaccinated. And what's the answer? Can I get some free legal advice from you? What's the answer, AJ? <laughs> uh, the short answer is it depends, right? It depends on which category um, of employee you fall into. So um, as you'll know, there are some employers, those in MIQ um, or at the border, who can require vaccination under the um, COVID-19 uh, public health order, um, but unfortunately we can't sort of cut and paste that into a normal office environment, for, for example. Okay, so this is really important. So we know the public health order gives people, for example, employers in MIQ the right to insist that their workforce is vaccinated. But that's not employment law, that's public health law. And that is not transferable, you're saying, into employment law. So if you are watching today and you are about to head into an office, say you have an admin job, can your employer insist on you being vaccinated? I'm going to give you another typical legal answer and say it depends. Mm. So uh, for all of the employers who aren't covered by the public health order, um, then they need to go through a health and safety risk assessment uh, for each of the roles that they want to require vaccination of. Um, and it will only be if there's a justifiable health and safety reason after you've gone through that risk assessment um, that the employer can require that the role is performed by a vaccinated person. Um, and so there's uh, broadly three categories, I think. Is, is the people who are covered by the public health order, like you say, that's legislation, they have to be vaccinated. Um, there's the uh, other end of the spectrum, which is going to be most office workers, where the health and safety risk assessment is not going to come up with an answer which says that role must be vaccinated. And then there's this group in the middle, and those are in the aged um, care sector and the public health um, community community health sector, those are the ones where we're looking at the moment um, and, and helping employers to say, well, actually, this role um, under the health and safety risk assessment is going to require vaccination because of the type of people you're interacting with and because of the risk. Right. So this is still being determined. I mean, this is like everything with this damn virus, right? We're making it up as we go along. Law relies on precedent, AJ, Ashley Jane. So is there precedent here? Do we have precedent that can help us? No, um, not really. Uh, so we've got some cases going to the courts at the moment. Uh, the main one actually is to do with a border worker uh, who was terminated because they refused to have the vaccination. So that case will be to do with that first category of employers. Yes. Uh, we don't have any case law yet um, on the second category, but don't worry, there's bound to be some. Yes, be, so there'll be test cases. So, so can I pick up, boy, I'm, I mean, boy, we don't have law and we don't have precedent. So I'm asking a lot of you, and I, I know that the answer is probably going to be it depends, but let's use the example that you fixed upon of the aged care facility, right? So this is, so let's talk about somebody working with dementia patients, for example. The people they're working with are highly vulnerable. We don't yet know where their employer stands in law, so public health law doesn't cover this, we don't think, so we don't yet know where their employer stands in employment law in terms of their right to say, you can't come to work if you're not vaccinated. 
Mm. So WorkSafe have put out some guidance and they've had that guidance out for a couple of months now. Interestingly, it was updated earlier this week. So if you are one of these employers, you need to go back and have another look at that guidance because it's um, much more detailed. Um, but that guidance sets out how to conduct that risk assessment and the factors that you should be taking into account. So in your example, it's going to depend on how close contact that employee has with those vulnerable residents, um, how how vulnerable they are, what the potential consequences are of those people catching COVID. Um, and we've got some good guidance from the Ministry of Health about that, who falls into the vulnerable and non-vulnerable communities. Um, and then it's going to take into consideration what other steps can an employer take first to mitigate that risk before they start mandating vaccination. Okay, boy, this is fascinating, isn't it? Hey, uh, HR, I just want to ask you, is if I am a worker, let's not use the example of but let's use anyone who's watching who was sitting in a pod or working in a retail premise alongside people or on a factory floor alongside people and there is someone close to them every day for eight hours a day who isn't vaccinated what right do we have as a workforce to assert our rights to not be near those people mm. so again it comes down to what what's reasonable in the particular circumstances. So we don't know what this hypothetical office worker, what their personal circumstances are. So it's going to be different, ah. for example, if that person um, is immunocompromised or has an immunocompromised child at home um, or is pregnant. Um, and so an employer has to look at all of those individual circumstances for each employee. Because remember, employment law is an individual relationship um, between the employer and the employee um, and the employer's obligation under the Health and Safety Act is to take all reasonably practicable steps in the circumstances to ensure the health and safety of their workers so it really is going to be a circumstance specific um, answer. Which makes it complex, which makes mm -hmm. it subjective and contentious and fraught with the potential for people to dispute, right? And so actually mm. there isn't going to be a one size fits all response to this in law, is there? No, definitely not. And what we're encouraging our, our clients to do at the moment is to think about your own workforce. Who have you got in the workforce and, and what does that look like? Do you have people with um, autoimmune uh, issues? Do you have pregnant workers in your workforce? Do you have uh, people who you know are not going to get vaccinated? And how are you going to deal with what uh, inevitably we're going to have, which is a mixed vaccination status workforce? Wow, this is absolutely fascinating. So it's going to be ages uh, before we actually have something that we can settle on and which we can cite as an example and say, if you are in this situation, this is what the precedent says. This could be weeks, months, even years. Uh, probably months. I know that there is certainly there's a case going to the employment court in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully we'll have a um, decision that's around the border workers um, and any other cases that, that roll through the courts, I'd expect to have an outcome in the next um, couple of months. What will be really interesting is how that, the proposed vaccine certificates, how they'll impact on this question, because um, potentially they're going to impact on a number of workers who are working at these large scale events. And so will um, the requirement for vaccine certificates sort of then end up requiring those employees to be vaccinated and effectively mandating vaccination for potentially hospitality and, and large scale event workers? Gosh, this is fascinating, isn't it? Watch this space. Uh, Ashley Jane, AJ Lodge, mm. who was employment partner uh, uh, and co-employment lead at Anderson Lloyd. We so appreciate you joining us this morning. Ashley Jane, thank you so much for your time and your insight into this unfolding area of law. We're very grateful indeed. Thank you.